service as well. I believe the next thing on our schedule is a week from this coming Friday, which I believe is August the 5th, we will have a movie night, um, August the 5th, Friday night, uh, movie night here at the church at 630, if you'd like to come and be a part of that. And then, um, but as far as the rest of our schedule, looking off into uh, the remaining portions of the summer, uh, I don't believe we have any other missionaries scheduled. We have some coming up in the fall, uh, but I believe our summer schedule um, is pretty much covered. Um, there will be a movie night now and then, but nothing um, added to the schedule other than that um, at this time. But um, again, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being here tonight. It's always an encouragement to see a good group on a Wednesday night. If you'll take your hymn books uh, to hymn number 78, if you would. 78 is where we will begin when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven. Let's stand to our feet. Let's all sing out tonight. let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of him and glory will the toils of life repay so everything we're going through in this lifetime the moment we see Jesus is going to make it all worthwhile and the, and the verse even goes on to say there in the first line trusting serving every day we're supposed to be busy until that day that we see him face to face wonderful song Let's go to hymn 91, if you would. Hymn 91. What a day that will be. When we all get to heaven, now what a day that will be. Maybe you're seeing a theme here tonight. We'll sing both verses here, then we'll, then we'll sit and we'll pray for our offering. Let's sing 
when we draw our last breath or when the trumpet sounds and we do go and we do see Jesus face to face and I hope that we never do take that day for granted that we do think <laughs> about it and we uh, we long for it but we also know that we have a responsibility while we are here and remain so that we can reach others with the gospel message but it is that just those two songs when we all get to heaven and when we do get to heaven, we'll see Jesus face to face. What a wonderful thought. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank you for your faithfulness. Continue to give. Uh, the church offerings are still staying strong even through uh, the, um, um, the economy that we're, everyone is experiencing right now. The utilities um, are doing nothing but going up um, at this time. And... Um, we're getting a little bit of break with the gas prices dropping some, but they're still a lot higher than they were. And so it kind of, uh, I don't want to get into this tonight really, but it, it, kind, it kind of, it's kind of funny when people are excited about gas coming down to 375. Yeah. You know, and, but again, I guess it's all in perspective, um, you know, where it was and where it is now. And, but anyway, I thank you for your faithfulness to continue to give to the church and follow um, what Lord, the Lord would have you to do um, in that area. And Blaine, if you could pray for the offering and pray for our missionaries tonight, if you would, please. Amen. Thank you. Let's let's sing one more song. You can remain seated. Um, I'll be the only one who stands through the whole service tonight. That'll be okay. And um, <laughs> hymn one fourteen. Tell it to Jesus. And I'm going to tell it to Jesus that I'm having to stand through the whole service while y'all while y'all get to sit. <laughs> tell it to Jesus.
thank you for singing out tonight. These three songs, they really, they really spoke to me this evening, and I'm going to be very careful that I just don't uh, start preaching here and not get to our um, subject in Hebrews tonight. But tell it to Jesus. How many times we that we may run and tell others without telling it to Jesus? Run to the world, run to our friends, run to here, run to there, run to the self-help books, whatever it may be. But we have the best friend. We have the one with the ready dancers. We have the one with the comforting spirit. We have the one with the very compassionate heart. But so many times we make him the last one we run to. When all this has failed, well, let's go to Jesus. Well, the, our mindset ought to be the first one we go to is Jesus. Lay, lay it at the cross, lay it at the altar, whatever term you may want to use, lay it at his feet, but go to Jesus with it. He is the friend about, that the song just said, is a friend that's well known. You know why he's not so well known to, to, to many Christians today? Because they don't learn anything about their friend. They're saved. They have a testimony of salvation, but that's as far as their friendship with Christ goes. They don't open their Bibles. They, they don't attend church on a regular basis. That's, you know, that's a friendship is developed over time. Some of you may have friends from your grade school years. I was talking to my daughter the other day on the phone, and we was just kind of talking about that subject, how, how I really don't, I don't have friends friends from high school I know them I, I may reply with a with a check mark or a like on their Facebook post but I haven't talked to them some of them I haven't talked to since tonight we graduated in 1980 but I'm glad I, I'm glad my friend Jesus is closer than that I call them friends but I don't go to them with my problems and that's how the Christian ought to be we have our friends in this world, but there's only one friend that can truly help us with our issues and with our troubles, and that's Jesus. If you'll take your Bibles for part two of the message tonight, Hebrews chapter 3, if you would. Hebrews chapter 3. Now, we're going to read the, we're starting a new chapter. We're going to, you know, as we continue our study through and how I originally had scheduled this, um, one chapter, uh, Wednesday night, well, it certainly is not that. Tonight, we're supposed to get through the first six verses. We're not going to get through the six, first six verses. It's just the way that the chapter is kind of uh, divided up in the, in the study guides and in the, in the, um, in the commentaries that I use. But, but we're, we, we probably won't get past verse 1 tonight, but we're going to read all six verses because they, to, they flow together. You understand that what creates false doctrine is taking scripture out of context. And, and that's, where, that's where all false doctrine is built upon. They just take one verse that they like and then they build their belief and their faith on that one verse. No, but we want, as we go through our study, we want to keep things in context. And so the first six verses that we're going to read, this is the context. Referring back to verse 1 where we will spend our time this evening. Notice if you would, verse number, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful uh, to his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than, um, than Moses, in, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope and the firm until the end. Notice verse 1 again. Wherefore, holy brethren... Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Now, just as a reminder, whether this is the apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, or, or another man who wrote this passage of scripture, 
it was geared to or it was a it was pointed to the teachings to the Jews it's a history uh, it's a history book it's a history lesson for the Jews of that day and for the Jews of today they're, they're having to introduce Jesus Christ to them because they were so encaptured and so their their historical uh, roots so to say the traditions of their high priest and and so much trouble that we see in the Gospels that the scribes had, the Pharisees had, the Sadducees had, and the High Council had with Jesus Christ is because he didn't come to overthrow the law. He came to fulfill the law as that sacrificial lamb. But again, but they were holding to, to their former traditions, to their father Abraham, to Moses. These gentlemen, they were well known in the Jewish community, in their Jewish heritage, uh, through their teachings but the writer here is understands that acknowledges it and so that's why we see um, in the first couple of chapters that Jesus Christ was better than, than the angels he is better than Adam he is better than, than, than the, the bullock he is better than the high priest and we will continue to see this theme going forward throughout the book of, of Hebrews because this writer is just trying to get to the Jews. Jesus Christ, the, the prophesied one, the one that was crucified on the cross of Calvary, he was better than those that you recognize today in your, in your heritage and in your tra uh, traditions. And so look at verse number one, if you would. Wherefore, holy brethren. Now note, note the word holy brethren. That phrase, that he's talking to the saved. But he's also talking to those Jews who may be unsaved, who, who do have questions, who, who, who God would truly love to present Jesus Christ to them. But he calls them holy brethren. Notice the next word, partakers of the heavenly calling. And that's where we're going to start tonight in that first phrase. In your notes, notice if you would, verse number one, and that word partakers. Notice, this word is showing active participation. And when you read that, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling. They are active participants. We are partakers of a holy calling, our heavenly calling. You and I today, as a saved child of God, we are partakers of Jesus Christ. We are partakers of what he had to offer. We actively accepted it. And so we have active participation in the in the beginning of this in the beginning of this verse. But notice this word is showing active participation in a heavenly calling. That's your first blank, heavenly calling. You and I have a heavenly calling tonight. We were not saved just to sit around and eat Oreos and dip them in milk all day. You and I are supposed to be active, participating in the works of God. That is, our, that is our appointment now. That's the reason we are left here on earth, so that we could take the gospel message, share it with our friends, tell our family, introduce our co-workers, be that living testimony of Jesus Christ that he would have us to be. But to do so, you have to be an active participant in it. And so notice the next line there. God would not have us to be passive, or inactive bystanders. God did not save us for us to sit on the sideline. I don't know how many of you played sports back in your younger days, but I didn't go through two days in football to be an active bystander on the sideline. If I was going to go through the heat, if I was going to go through the pain, if I was going to go through all of that running and conditioning, I wanted to be on the field, active participating in it. God did not save or has never saved an individual and gave them the liberty or the free will to sit down and wait for the coming of the Lord. He expects us all to be actively participating in the things of God and in his church. I believe with all my heart that everyone who attends a church, now they may not stand up behind a microphone, they may not stand up in a choir loft or play an instrument or sing a special, but I believe within, the, within an active church, there ought to be active church members. 
They ought, to, they ought to have a role. They ought to have a place of responsibility. And, and you understand, and I've said it many times over the years, you understand that there is no small role in God's program. There are no small roles in God's program. If you're doing something for the church, if you're doing something in, for the work of the Lord, God acknowledges that. And he does not put a grade on it. The pastor does not get a 10 because he stands behind the microphone and then the one who cleans the bathroom gets a two because they're scrubbing a toilet. No, God recognizes everything that is done for the glory of God. And if we do a role in the church, we ought to be doing it for his glory and nobody else's. We ought to do it for him, for his honor. I'm gonna clean this toilet the best that I can for the honor of God. This is his house, his restroom, and I want it to be, I want it to be uh, shining bright and smelling fresh because it's in his house. Now, that may sound a little unusual, but it's the truth. It's the truth. So he would not have us be act, inactive bystanders. Notice letter A. So I just asked some questions here. How many of you have ever made a New Year's resolution and saw it through to completion? How many of you have ever began a diet? And, sh and showed it uh, and carried it forth until your goal was met, or an exercise program and continued as an active participant. I've made New Year's resolutions to the point where I don't even make them anymore. It's just another day of the year. The date's going to change, just like tomorrow's date's going to change. One date becomes the next date. May stay up a little bit later. Diets. Oh, we talk about diets often. I even, you know, I told you recently, the last time we talked about a diet, I got up right then, I went to, I went to the grocery store, and I got the yogurts, I got the fruit, I, I, got, I got cheese, I got, I got this stuff that's supposed to be okay for you, good for you, and no chips, none of that. Well, that's just a thing of the past now. Last night after 11 o'clock, I, I was sitting there watching TV, and Stacy was working, and, I, and she is headed to the kitchen. I said, Stacy, she looked at me and she said, what? I said, could I have three lemon cookies? <laughs> three lemon cookies. And, and you know, after 11, so that's, that's not on a diet plan. Not, not a diet plan that I have found. And exercise, pro, yeah, I only had three. I could have had more. Exercise program, joined a gym. A couple of years ago, and Kyle and I would drive by it, and we would look at it. We'd have, we'd have our gym card in our back pocket, and, and, they, and he said, well, one day maybe we ought to go visit it. We ought to drop in on them, see how they're doing. But that's, that's as far as exercise goes. But then you see in the next line, New Year's resolutions, they may last a month. Diet plans may last a week. And exercise, it probably lasts until the body says, let's take a break. But for the average Christian, the Christian life is much like these examples, unfortunately. They begin with determination and eagerness. A new Christian, they will begin with much determination and eagerness. But notice, but with time, apathy, and indifference will begin to show. When that takes place, and it takes root in a church, and if it is allowed to spread, that church will die. There are more churches dying across America tonight than there are active participating churches in America tonight because indifference is set in they, they've taken their friend they've taken their eyes off their friend in Jesus they, they have instead of running and telling it to Jesus they're running and telling it to everybody else indifference apathy no one cares whenever we stop caring for the lost man that's apathy Notice, if you would, let's leave a finger there. Let's go over and run a couple of these references here. Let's go to um, 
Hebrews chapter 10. Same audience, same writer here. Verse 22, I'm down to 25. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an, uh, from an evil conscience and our water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Let us consider one another to provoke uh, unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but notice, but exhorting one another, and, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. If you read that verse, read that passage, that, that, just, that just shows active participating, of participation. This here is concerned. The, the, the ones that he is talking about here are talking to. He said, you need to continue in this way. We need to draw near. We need to hold fast. We need to consider one another. And then we do not need to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That became so commonplace today. So commonplace to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Well, I'll go next week. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go another time. I was just there last month. We ought, we ought to look forward to Sundays. We ought to look forward to Wednesdays. We ought to look forward to any time that the church door is open. But that's when they're actively participating. This is when they're, become, they're, they're under the being partakers of their heavenly calling. Notice the next line there. So Christian, you're not alone in the calling. You must be an active participant. They say that the strongest chain is as weak as its weakest link. The same can be said for the church. The church is as, is as strong as its weakest member. The church body requires active participating, or participation. Let me give you an example. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Remember over in chapter 10, he was, he was talking to those who were actively participating in their service. But notice chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, you ought to give more earnest heed to the things which you have heard, lest at any time you should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders, with divers miracles, and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, according unto his will. But notice the, the difference here. Chapter 10 was showing us partakers of the heavenly calling. Here the writer is giving a warning to those same individuals. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed. We need to listen more. We need to put forth more effort. We need to participate more in our heavenly calling. And then he goes on. Lest at any time we should let them slip. When do things seem to get away from us? When we're no longer actively participating in them. When did your diet plan get away from you? When you are no longer actively participating in it. When did your exercise program get, a, get, get away from you? When you actively were not participating in it. You let it slip. And so our heavenly calling can slip away from us if we're not actively being partakers of it. And so in chapter 3, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. And then on down in your notes, so the Hebrew Christians had begun, they had begun well. Early in their Christian experience, they endured great suffering and persecution Many had their property confiscated on account of their faith, and they endured joyfully. But now they were in danger of drifting back into Judaism and neglecting their great salvation in Jesus Christ. They had become comfortable. 
or maybe persecution had, had pushed them to a point. They had lost their faith in God. They had lost their trust. They had, gone, they had turned their attention back to, uh, to themselves and into the world and, and no longer actively participating. And when that takes place, the old devil is going to have a stronghold. The old devil is going to have that open window to our hearts and to our lives that he loves to creep into. But notice here, as a writer, as a writer wrote this letter to the Jews, he reminded them about the importance of remaining active, the, partake, uh, the partakers as we've been speaking of. Notice there are shares with other holy brethren. That's what the verse said. Wherefore, holy brethren, so plural there. We go to 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, chapter 12 if you would I want you to see that you're just not in this alone that you are needed to be actively participating in, as a heavenly body tonight 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 14 if you would well let's start in verse 13 for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, or whether we be bond or free, and have been, have all, um, been all made to drink unto one spirit. Now notice, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. If the whole body were an eye, uh, where were the hearing? If the whole, uh, if the whole were hearing, then where, where were the smelling? And so this body that is picturing here is the church body, the body in, the, in Christ through the, through, the, uh, through the Holy Spirit of God, through salvation. We come into Gospel Light Baptist Church as one body. And that one body is made up of active participating. Active, actively uh, encountering one another, actively working with the same goal in mind. And so some of us may be the eyes, some may be the ears, some may be the hands, some may be represented by the foot, whatever it may be. It takes all parts to make up the body unto the heavenly calling. So never say that I'm not important to Gospel Light Baptist Church. Never say I'm not important in the role of God. I'm not important in his, in, his, in his work through the church. We all have a place. And if we're not in our place, if we're not active in our place, then the church is weakened by it, just like that chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It doesn't matter what can be towed by that chain. If one of those chains is if one of those links is compromised, it does not matter. And so the church is the same. Our church is weakened if we have somebody who is not actively participating, fulfilling the role that God would have them to, uh, to fulfill. And so let's go on. Our next word that we see there in chapter three. And we've seen it a, a time or two um, in, in this book already, or in this lesson already. But notice, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Consider. Our next word is consider. So partakers, consider. Consider, and it's referring back to the active participants. Brother Dillon's an active participant in the role here at Gospel Light Baptist Church. Now the Bible is telling Dillon, now you need to consider. And what does the word consider kind of picture for us? Take a pause. Look about. Put some forethought into it. To, to look, to ascertain what's taken place as his role in the body. But consider it. So notice here, consider means to think about something by taking the time to observe it carefully. We are living in such a 
a time today, we don't take the time to consider hardly anything. We, we, we want to rush off in our, in our three-minute popcorn. We want to rush off in our five-minute microwave dinners. We want to rush off into our TVs with no commercials. We want to rush off into things. But when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to our holy calling, God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying through this writer, slow down a moment. Stop and consider. How many times have maybe you been going through something in life or going dealing with something in that day and you're just going a thousand miles a minute and you have to tell yourself, stop. Slow down a second. Let your mind catch up. And, and, and whatever you are searching for, it's a little easier to find once you stop and consider for a second. Well, where was the last place I saw it? What, what, what was the last time I used it? And I'll start there to look for it. But first you had to slow down and consider for a second. And that happens so much in our lives. Notice here, in the Greek, this word consider means to fix one's thoughts. And that's just what I pictured there. Stop and, and let your, th let your th thoughts um, catch up with you. So let your fix one's thoughts, their mind, their attention, and eyes on Jesus Christ. Heavenly calling. Let's go to Luke chapter 12 that we have there. Luke chapter 12. Look at verse 22, if you would. Jesus Christ speaking, of course, speaking to his disciples. And he said unto, unto his disciples, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall you eat? Neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and, and the body is more than raiment. Now notice, here's that word again, consider the ravens. So he's going to draw them a picture story here. Jesus Christ with his, with his disciples, he's going to draw them. He has a whiteboard there on the side of the mount. Takes out his marker and he, draw, he draws a raven. Consider the raven. For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. The raven is a part of God's creation, but they don't go out and plant a garden. They don't reap in what they planted. They don't have a barn to store their goods in, but God feeds them. Consider that for a moment. Now let's go on. Uh, feed it them. How much more are ye better than the fowl? And which of you, with, uh, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? So while you're considering how you're going to meet all your needs by yourself, consider that God's going to take care of the raven. And then all of your thinking, how many of you can gain 18 inches in your stature because you think about it? I'm going to think real hard and I think I'm going to gain, and I think I'm going to grow 18 inches. Because I'm thinking about it, I'm putting thought in it. Some of you who, who go into work every day, try calling your boss tomorrow. And tell them, I'm at home considering growing 18 inches. I won't be in today. Mankind does not have that capacity. Now, it's a silly illustration, but that's what Jesus Christ is saying. Which of you, with get, taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? Verse 26. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? So it's just a little thing. These are little things to God. Look at verse 27. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not. Yet I say unto you that Solomon with all his glory 
was not arrayed like one of these. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a field of lilies before. Beautiful flowers. But that lily didn't sit there and consider how it grew. It didn't consider where its nourishment came from. God took care of that. And so over in Hebrews, the writer is telling the, the, he, the brethren with the, uh, who are partakers of a heavenly ca- calling, he says, now just consider this for a second. Slow down for a moment. And let's go on. So much like the word partakers, the writer is seeking the attention of the Christian. In your next blank, slow down and focus on Jesus Christ. I wonder how often we get so busy in our daily activities we don't even think about Jesus Christ. Because we're focused on everything else in the world. Focus on Jesus Christ. Nonchalant Christianity will cause one to focus on the world in place of Jesus Christ. Nonchalant Christianity will cause those who are saved to focus on the world more than they will Jesus Christ. I read this this here that I've written about the park ranger. I read this and I really like it. About the park ranger who was still working in his late 80s. He had spent his life exploring and enjoying the spectacular beauty of Yellowstone. And one day a woman rushed over to him and asked, If you only had one hour to see Yellowstone, what would you do? He slowly repeated her words, only one hour to see Yellowstone. After a, after a pause, he said, ma'am, if I only had one hour to see Yellowstone, I'd go over to that log, sit down, and cry. If I only had one hour to consider Yellowstone, I'd go over there, sit down, and cry because I just had the hour. Folks, we have a lifetime to consider Christ. But how much time do we spend considering Christ? How, how, how is our participation, our participation in the heavenly calling? This, this gentleman, this 80-year-old man, he couldn't get enough of the Yellowstone's beauty in its creation. I wonder... How much consideration do we actually give when it comes to the things of God? We go on down. How much time do we spend considering the wonders of Christ? The Bible, your next blank, the Bible is full of his majesty and glory. The Bible is full of his majesty and glory. He's that friend that we ought to be well accustomed and acquainted with. There are 66 books. 1,189 chapters, 783,137 words in the King James Bible. How, how acquainted are we with them? Do we, do we stop and even consider them? And then, see number one there, consider the apostle. In Hebrews chapter 3, consider the apostle of our profession Jesus Christ this is the only place in scripture that Jesus is referred to as an apostle the name Jesus when when used alone refers to his humanity which is your next blank refers to his humanity as the savior apostle means one who is sent under authority let's go and let's look at a couple of these verses let's go to the book of John one who is sent under authority. John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Notice, sent. An apostle is sent, they're called out. They're given an appointment. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus comes along the seashore, calls out Peter, Andrew, James, and John, follow me. 
and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will send you. I will send you out to be fishers of men. So an apostle is one who is sent. John chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus Christ speaking, For I am come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So he is an apostle. The apostle is one who was sent forth as an ambassador or a representative of the one that sent them. Apostles were given full authority and power. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10 if you would. Jesus came and was given all power. Matthew chapter 28 tells us that. But his, his, the apostles that he sent out were given much power. Look at Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto, unto him the twelve disciples, those that we know as apostles, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to, notice, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. And so they were given this power. Jesus Christ in his human nature was given this power. Jesus Christ was sent from on high to take on the form of man, these apostles were called out, and then they too were sent out with the gospel message. And in also, as part of their calling and, and, their, and, and what, what they were given, they were given enough power, they were given the power to clean others from the evil spirits and so forth. So the apostle was sent out with great authority. Look at Luke chapter 9, if you would. One more point there, Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. Notice, then he, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority, notice, over all devils. So Peter, James, John, Matthew, the others, they were given, they were given great authority. They were given great power when Jesus Christ sent them out. And so Jesus was given this power, and I got, and I have you a couple of verse, uh, references there. Notice, notice the power, or notice the word profession. You have the word profession in chapter three, verse one. Consider the apostle and high priest, and our profession of Jesus Christ. Your next blank there. Notice the word profession. We profess and confess that Jesus Christ is the supreme apostle of our faith and lives. He is the supreme apostle. Just as he was better than the angels, he's better than Peter. He's better than John, he's better than James and the other and the others that are listed. He's the supreme apostle. So as the supreme representative, he shows us what God is like, and as a supreme messenger, he tells us the truth about God. And then our time is up. Let me give you the blank for consider the high priest, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the great high priest that stands between God and man. And there isn't a whole lot here about the high priest because we're going to get um, in more uh, detail about the high priest in the coming chapters. That's why I didn't put more here, but you see there's quite a few references there. And I would just encourage you to take your 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 um, hand out home maybe use this and that portion about the high priest maybe use it as a daily devotion tomorrow and then we will pick up uh, there next Wednesday all right but thank you for being here tonight I hope that you have a wonderful remainder of the week continue to pray for one another if you would but let's yes ma'am Friday is the 29th. Friday is the 29th. For? Oh, 
it's, uh, it's August 5th because what we, because what we had to do because Miss uh, Stacy Bramos having that wedding reception, um, um, not reception, but the yeah, shower. Right. So she has the building Friday and Saturday. Okay. Yep, there won't be anything other than her activity taking place here. August the 5th is the movie night, 6.30, okay? All right, well, let's stand. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And Dylan, if you'd please dismiss us.